Our very top focus this hour, India's third lunar mission. Yes, the entire country waits with bated breath for the launch of Chandrayaan-3, which is set to launch on July 14th, a mere about 30 hours from this very moment. The spacecraft will embark on a journey lasting slightly over a month, with the intended landing near the Moon's South Pole expected around mid-August. As preparations for the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft takeoff are underway at Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh, it is important to note that this is India's second attempt to land on the Moon's surface. A feat especially which has not been accomplished yet near the Moon's South Pole. The Chandrayaan-3 mission is a major milestone for India's space program. The mission is expected to provide valuable insights into the Moon's geology and mineralogy and it will also pave the way for future human missions to the lunar surface. One very interesting fact in about this mission is that the cost of the entire Chandrayaan-3 mission is a mere US dollars 73 million. This, of course, is testament to India's Atmanirbharta on the space frontier. Joining us on the broadcast at this point of time is my colleague Akshit Gupta. Akshit, over to you. Can you take our viewers through what is the latest as far as the preparations for the launch of the Chandrayaan-3 is concerned? Of course, the countdown has now begun uh, for the launch of Chandrayaan-3 uh, and ISRO is all set, geared up to launch its third lunar exploration mission, Chandrayaan-3, tomorrow, that is July 14th, from Sri Harikota. Uh, 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 and India, which now becomes the fourth country to land its spacecraft on the surface of the moon and demonstrate the country's abilities for safe and soft landing on the lunar surface. Well, uh, the ISRO has also uh, already taken undertaken a 24-hour launch rehearsal, uh, simulating the entire launch preparation and the process for the mission. And the mission is slated uh, to be launched at 2:35 p.m. Uh, Indian Standard Time. Uh, so LBM3 uh, will be launched from the spaceport of Sri Harikota, and even a team of ISRO scientists arrived at the Tirupati Temple today uh, to offer prayers with a miniature model of Chandrayaan-3 and I must also tell you that uh, meanwhile uh, this will be ISRO's follow-up attempt after Chandrayaan-2 mission space challenges during its uh, soft landing in 2019 and, uh, and the mission failed after the Vikram lunar landed crashed on the moon during the early hours on that day. Uh, so this mission, uh, so they have learned from those mistakes and they, uh, they hope that m this mission would be successful and they, they are hopeful that uh, it will land on the moon uh, around August 23 or 24. So the countdown has already begun, as I say. Uh, so now it remains to be seen as to how this pans out. Back to you. All right, Akshit. Thank you for taking our viewers through uh, the very comprehensive preparations that are underway at this stage. You, in fact, mentioned uh, that there have been significant improvements that have been made as compared to India's uh, last moon mission, that was the Chandrayaan-2, which attempted to uh, perform a similar such landing back in 2019. Also joining us on the broadcast, at this point of time is group captain VN Shah. He is the former joint director of DRDO. Uh, very good morning, sir, and thank you for joining us on News X. We are, of course, discussing, uh, you know, India's ambitious uh, lunar landing attempt this time around the Chandrayaan-3. Um, what do you think um, will India achieve through this at this point of time? You know, our first attempt, of course, we found out that uh, water uh, was uh, present at the moon's surface. Um, Chandrayaan-2 uh, was a very ambitious attempt to land on the South Pole and we have of course made si significant upgrades since our last attempt and uh, we're going for it again this time, uh, not deterred uh, by uh, the slight challenge that we faced last time. Um, what is your expectation from this mission? I wish all the best to ISRO, Government of India, who have taken lot many care lot many uh, care in the sense that they have not left any stone unturned in uh, completing the procedures that they had initiated after the partial success of uh, Chandrayaan 2. 
essentially we had all witnessed uh, the the effort of uh, soft landing of chandrayaan 2 when it came very close to the surface of the moon about uh, we expect about 1.2 kilometers above the surface uh, when it lost the contact there could be various reason uh, of course the failure analysis is not in the public domain but we expect that uh, the soft landing failed owing to various reason first and foremost was the a uh, bit of shortage of the fuel of the engine of uh, lander uh, it could not sustain hovering and coming down gradually that much of fuel was not there so this time the fuel uh, stock has been augmented uh, even the engines uh, onto the lunar uh, have been you know uh, in the, in the multitudes of the proportions uh, they are carrying i believe uh, 800 newtons four engine and then eight engines of what 57 or newtons so this must of thrust is there with a new configuration and uh, of course uh, the team of isro has gone to uh, you know uh, the god to pray but this is all fine uh, it is it all adds up but the basic work has been done by isro in the sense the design changes of the thrust as i mentioned to you design changes in terms of uh, uh, strengthening the legs of the uh, lander uh, design changes in bringing down the the center of mass uh, a bit low so that the toppling of the uh, lander doesn't happen as happened last time so the legs have been strengthened the inclination tolerance from the chandrayaan 2's 18 degree it has been augmented to now almost about 35 to 40 degree so in all probability we feel that the the uh, craft will not topple down thirdly the uh, the the area of landing earlier it was supposed to be near the south pole uh, a stretch of about uh, half into half kilometer this time uh, with the uh, repeated pass of the orbiter orbiter 2 they have found out a plane surface uh, at about 69 degree south of the the lunar uh, surface uh, about uh, you know 4 uh, kilometers into 2 and 1/2 kilometers uh, of the dimension that they have but this is a huge stretch of the land where there will be some space which is absolutely plain and looking down by the landers camera they can ascertain in addition they have got numerous sensors uh, installed onto the land uh, lander the craft which will give you know the varying uh, uh, degrees of the proximity of the land when it comes for the soft landing so all these taken care of the simulations done the trials actual trials on the ground done here on the earth we are pretty sure that this time the soft landing is going to be there god forbid for you know in the in the technology we can uh, uh, never be uh, 100% uh, sure uh, because when we do the fmeca that is the failure mode effects and criticality analysis that time we know that there are you know 0.00001% chances of this 0.003% uh, chances of this those analysis when we do there are remote possibility of one or thing going uh, odd or uh, going bad but then we have got the redundancy incorporated into the entire system so with all this we are pretty sure that this time isro is going to succeed wish them all the best Oh uh, well, sir. You've also talked. You've talked, in fact, in depth about the upgrades, and I'd like to, uh, in fact, inform my viewers that as far as the propulsion system is uh, concerned of the lander, there's uh, a significant boost in that sense too. It's a bi-propellant bi-propul- uh, propulsion system that the lander uh, will use this time around. Uh, meanwhile, Group Captain Cha, I'd like to rope you in for one more uh, s- uh, query. Um, you know, I highlighted in my opening monologue earlier that this mission costs a 
about 73 million US dollars, uh, which is rather interesting uh, because, of course, you know, we have big blockbusters, in fact, that cost more than this mission. Is this testament to India's Atmanirbharta and the leaps and strides that India has taken as far as the space frontier is concerned? Look, when it comes to the futuristic technologies, like Chandrayaan 3 is uh, taking into uh, effect, we really don't consider much about, you know, uh, 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 cost of it. There is a broad cost factor in launching the mission. That is the, the rocket, the payload of Chandrayaan 3, and all such issues. But that is, that is immaterial as far as demonstration of technology is concerned. Look, we are going to the moon. We are going to the moon at a place where no one has gone earlier, towards the southern pole. That is the surface, that is the area where least of the contamination due to meteorite uh, hits have been there. So we are likely to find a soil, what we call in terms of science a regolith, which is as original as could be with the least of the contamination of the meteoritic uh, uh, impacts. So we are going to that place where our rover uh, uh, will come out of the lander and then going to analyze the composition of the regolith and also carry out some experiments in which the type of uh, rare metals, rare elements will be analyzed. You know, uh, everything, the first time when first element was detected, you know, that was a scientific feat by those uh, the scientists. Now this time we are going to the moon and God forbid, you know, if everything goes well, we may come up with a 119th element of the periodic table. Who knows? That new element may be there on the lunar surface. So with all these possibilities, the achievements are huge and then we don't talk of the cost factor. See, look, India today is not the same India what used to be having the begging ball. Today's India has got, it, it, it is the fifth largest economy in the world. It is progressing fast enough to leave all those factors of the uh, poorish impoverishment behind. So we are looking forward both in terms of prosperity, science, the future achievements. Here we don't talk of those small costs. Look, the, for the future of the science, for the future of technology, these steps ought to be taken, and that is what is being taken. These are the areas where small, you know, being a bit of uh, 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 not spending the type of, uh, 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 say, effort, money, and, and the sort of uh, uh, involvement that is required that will cost us big. So we don't care about that small cost. The mission is going on. It is reasonably cheap when uh, compared to the, uh, in the, the, the other states of US or China or Russia sending such uh, crafts. So it is reasonably uh, cheap, but effective. Right now, again, I repeat, we don't look up to those, those miserly factors of uh, saving uh, one million uh, dollar or something like that. We don't uh, look on that. We are only focusing our aim to going there, uh, doing the soft landing without failure, carrying out the experiments that we have planned, getting those data uh, into our ISRO uh, hub, and then analyzing it. That is how we are going with. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.